National Surgical Adjuvant Bowel and Breast Project and started way back in 1970s. And recently I saw a nice video lecture by the originator of NSVP trial, Dr. Bernard Fisher. So I will share it on email. It's been sent to me by Dr. Sudeep Gupta, the director of the Tata Memorial Center in Navi Mumbai, ACTREC. And it's a very nice and informative lecture describing the journey of Dr. Bernard Fisher from 50s, how he started doing research in animals and mouse, grew tumor. And then he came to conclusion that whatever was being taught and practiced in oncology, mostly in field of breast cancer, was not correct. So he gave his own theory that breast cancer is systemic right from the beginning. And uh, way back in 50s, he started uh, the initial trials on uh, breast cancer. And the first surgical trial started, B04 was the first surgical trial. And uh, so we'll uh, just give the history and then, uh, and we should all be grateful, thankful to Dr. Bernard Fisher and his entire team of NSABP. The central office is located in Philadelphia and they have uh, changed the picture, the paradigm, you know, uh, on which breast cancer was treated. And initially, Halstead radical mastectomy was the standard of care, whether it is one centimeter tumor or 10 centimeter tumor, whether it was in-situ or invasive, everything, you know, was treated by just one operation. So this gentleman, Dr. Bernard Fisher, changed this paradigm, existing paradigm of Halstadian theory. And um, all the doctors, surgeons and the patients, lady patients, uh, are grateful to uh, the paradigm shift that Dr. Bernard Fisher's SABP trial has introduced. And initially, they evaluated a lot of surgical techniques, whether it should do mastectomy or lumpectomy, lumpectomy with radiotherapy. And then later on, they progressed to even evaluating in situ cancer. And then they assessed the role of sentinel node biopsy, the largest breast cancer trial on 5611 patients, 5611 patients, perhaps the largest single RCT, you know, in surgery. Uh, was conducted to evaluate whether sentinel node biopsy is the right treatment for women who have clinically node negative axilla. So all these very important landmark um, uh, changes in the management of breast cancer have been brought about thanks to the NSABP spirit of evaluating the treatment through the rigor of science, through the lens of RCT. Okay, so with this introduction, um, some of the new drugs like aromatase inhibitors, uh, like uh, evaluating treatment of intraductal in situ cancer, uh, role of taxanes, role of neoadjuvant chemotherapy, role of targeted molecular therapies, trastuzumab, bisphosphonates, and uh, uh, all th these uh, have improved the outcome and quality of life for patients especially with early breast cancer, okay? So uh, these are the major changes that NSABP has introduced in the last uh, 40 years or so. So, okay, so it changed the paradigm um, of treatment. The paradigm shift has been noticed, right from the Halstadian principle of treating all tumors that uh, um, this Halstead worked for some time in uh, Europe. So he was working in association with Theodore Billroth, Rudolf Farkow, the father of pathology, who gave this, he used to do um, post-mortem studies of patients who had died of cancer. And Dr. Farkow found that cancer was found at the time of death in most patients in the lymph nodes. So he said, okay, tumor spreads to lymph node, from lymph node it goes to bloodstream. So if you remove the lymph nodes, perhaps we will cure the cancer. So Dr. Halstead learned this concept and when he moved, returned back to America, he started doing radical mastectomy. So this was Halsteadian principle existed in 
a field of breast surgery for nearly 100 years from 1882 till about 1940s and then dr petty in america and dr madden in uh, sorry dr sir richard sir uh, petty in in, um, in uh, england and uh, dr madden in america challenged this hypothesis and they tried to stop doing radical Halstead mastectomy and preserve the pectoralis major. So this was the first major change challenging the Halsteadian principle and um, how we proved that this is the correct scientific approach. This the trial was B04 and B06 then assessed the role of lumpectomy and basically these trials assess the extent of local therapy in breast cancer. So um, women no longer had to undergo disfiguring, mutilating radical mastectomy operations. Uh, they were replaced by more gentle and cosmetically appealing, acceptable breast conserving therapy, thanks to NSABP trials. So this is all the history. And uh, yeah, starting with B0, B04, uh, Dr. Fisher said was the first large surgical trial they embarked upon and B stands for B B stands for breast trials and 04 means the number of trial okay so B is breast trial and 04 is the number of the study I used to think there should be B01 but I realized with the uh, listening to the speech of Dr. Fisher that they started with 04 for some reason. So B04 was the first trial where they assessed the radical mastectomy both in node positive and node negative and radical mastectomy in one group which was the standard of treatment in those days compared to total mastectomy, total mastectomy with x-ray dissection or with nodal irradiation. Okay. So so this was the schema of this was the schema of NSAP B04 trial patient with operable breast cancer in the clinically node negative as a node they did it for both the groups node negative and node positive in the node negative group they then further treated into three arms women had total mastectomy in one group radical Halstead mastectomy in the other and total mastectomy followed by axillary radiotherapy. So axillary nodes were not treated at all by in the first group, total mastectomy alone, axilla was left untreated. Mind you, these are women with clinically node negative axilla. Okay, clinically node negative axilla, total mastectomy alone, axilla was not touched, only breast was removed. Here, breast and all the level one, two, and three nodes. And here, total mastectomy alone, axilla not touched surgically, but radiotherapy was offered to the axilla. Now, can somebody just uh, recall what are the structures removed in radical Halstead mastectomy? Can somebody tell if somebody is listening? Can you hear me? Is the voice clear? Yes, Hello? Sir. Yes, sir. So, can somebody just uh, enumerate the structures removed in radical Halstead mastectomy? Sir, the nipple areola, the entire breast, uh, level 1, 2, 3 lymph nodes, the pectoralis major, uh, pectoralis minor. Mm -hmm. And axillary tail of the breast and 2 cm of skin, skin over the tumor and up to 2 cm of skin all around the tumor. Skin over the tumor and 2 cm of skin around the tumor, nipple areola complex, entire breast, pectoral fascia, pectoralis major, pectoralis minor, level uh, red, uh, axillary tail of spence, level 1, 2, and 3 lymph nodes. Sparing what nerves? What are the nerves preserved? Spinal axis. Sorry. So long thoracic nerve of bell, the mm -hmm. medial pectoral nerves, and the thoracodorsal nerve. Yeah. And if possible, intercostobrachial nerve. Yes. But in those days, perhaps they were not kind to intercostobrachial nerve. They were just cutting everything. So 
um, but now we try to preserve the intercostal brachial nerve which is which is the branch of which nerve intercostal brachial nerve it is a lateral cutaneous branch of the second intercostal nerve t2 second intercostal t2 lateral cutaneous branch of second thoracic nerve and it supplies the skin of the armpit where we apply the uh, deodorant the hair bearing area of the skin so if you cut this nerve there is numbness or sometimes paresthesia in the armpit skin okay so but in the total mastectomy skin over the tumor 2 cm around the tumor nipple areola complex and pectoral fascia and pectoral fascia in those days the pectoral fascia was removed in all cases but they were not entering the axilla perhaps they were entering because uh, in total mastectomy should theoretically in entail or encompass removal of the axillary tail of spens which enters the axilla through a foramen in the axillary fascia called foramen of langer langer l a n g a langer's line you know langer's line in skin foramen of langer is a hole in the axillary fascia through which axillary tail of spens enters the armpit so when we remove the axillary tail actually there are lymph nodes in the axillary tail there are lymph nodes in the breast tissue the intra mammary nodes sometimes some good mammogram a good ultrasound may show a solid um, uh, well defined lesion and then the radiologist say oh this is a lymph node it's a intra mammary lymph node so there are nodes in the axillary tail so if when you say i am doing total mastectomy i am not touching the axilla you are wrong you are removing some of the nodes embedded in the substance in the parenchyma of the breast So intramembrane nodes are removed, and some nodes are present in and around the axillary tail. So inevitably, you will remove some low-level one axillary nodes. You can't avoid that. But uh, uh, the difference between the, this arm and this arm was that this operation was followed by radiotherapy. Okay, and radical mastectomy is classical radical mastectomy. And this trial opened in uh, 1971 and finished in 1974. Okay. And at the same time, uh, in England, uh, in the King's College, uh, they started a King's uh, trial, and a part of this trial was also begun in Cambridge, um, and it is called King's Cambridge trial. So similar concept, similar hypothesis, King's College, the King's Cambridge trial in England, and uh, NSABP zero four trial in America. So this trial. Recruited one six six five women, clinically node negative women. So they had full mastectomy with LND. They had two percent axillary recurrence mastectomy with axillary radiotherapy. Okay, two percent and mastectomy with only observation. axilla was not tested at all no radiation just observe and they had 20% recurrence 20% recurrence if axilla was not touched 2% if you gave radiotherapy so from 20 it became 2 from 20 it became 2 by radiotherapy so what do we learn from this study what's the moral of this story that microscopic nodes are present clinically they are not negative women but microscopic nodal metastasis present it's 1830 and they can be rendered ineffective by radiation so microscopic dose uh, radiation in the nodes can control the disease in the large majority of patient reducing the recurrence rate from 20% to 2% and if you offered uh, modify this mr uh, it was Halstead mastectomy with full ALND, um, again recurrence two percent. Okay, so whether you do radiotherapy or do full X-ray dissection, the nodal recurrence is same. So we learnt it right from B zero four study that microscopic nodal disease can be controlled with the same effectiveness whether you do ALND or you do X-ray radiotherapy. And recently. Amaros trial has actually 
revisited. They have revisited and reconfirmed this biological phenomenon. Okay, that microscopic nodal disease can be effectively controlled by radiation. Amaros trial, same results. So in B04, what happened? That they had one arm as radical mastectomy. Okay, radical mastectomy arm, the middle one. Okay, radical mastectomy. So they found that in the radical mastectomy arm, 30 to 40 percent cases had microscopic cancer. In radical mastectomy, all the nodes were removed, so they were not palpable clinically. But in histology, 40 percent had microscopic cancer in the axillary nodes. So in the other arm, in total mastectomy, total mastectomy arm, only 19 percent developed recurrence. So what happened to the other? So if it is 40, 19 is almost you can say 20. So from 40 it became 20. So in 20 it did not recur or 21. It did not recur. Why? The body's immune defense system, the nodes have T cell and B cells. You have the germinal follicles outside. They are the T, uh, the B lymphocytes, germinal follicles, and then in the central cortex or deep cortex we have t lymphocyte area t cell area and b cell area so these t and b cells inside the nodes are put by mother nature for some purpose they are supposed to kill the foreign body and bacteria which are entering the afferent lymphatics so tumor cells entering these nodes are also perhaps killed by these t and b lymphocytes and mostly T lymph. We now know that tumor immunity is mostly cell mediated, T cell mediated. CD8, CD8 type of T lymphocytes are called cytotoxic cells, and natural killer cells also kill the cells. And T reg, T regulatory cell or T reg in short, are actually reverse of the cytotoxic. So in uh, patients who have progressive disease or la aggressive, uh, large advanced cancer, their CD8 count is low, cytotoxic T cell count is low and T reg is high. So, but in persons who have intact immune system, uh, these uh, lymph nodes uh, containing uh, cytotoxic T lymphocytes kill the tumor cells. So, only half of them present as axillary node recurrence from 40% to 19%. Okay. And if you give radiotherapy further, it will reduce to 2.9. So from 19, it became 2.9, developed actual recurrence. So we learned that 40% only half manifest clinically. Of the 40% only half manifest clinically. And of these, of 40, half, half, half of 40, 20, okay. So, so half are controlled by body's immune defense and of those 20 which will progress if you give radiotherapy you reduce it to 3 from 20 to 3 okay so that means almost 5 sixth of the clinically active i am calling it clinically active 40 percent had microscopic disease okay 40% had microscopic disease in health state microscopic in the axillary nodes. Of those, only 19 are presenting as clinical recurrence. So I am calling them clinically active disease. Clinically active disease. So half of those become clinically active. And of those clinically active nodes, 5 sixths of them, majority, 5 sixths of them can be controlled by radiotherapy okay this is the message this is the moral of the story we learned from nsap b04 prior then we come to b0 so b04 trial showed that microscopic nodal disease can be controlled by so two things we learned what are two things we learned from b04 that for microscopic nodal disease you need not do axillary dissection. Axillary radiotherapy is sufficient. Okay, that's the one thing we learned. Either do ALND 
or RT to Excella results recurrence are same. The other thing that we learned from this trial was that total, whether you do total mastectomy or radical mastectomy, breast extent of breast removal results are same. So why you do total mastectomy? So therefore, people started doing just this is also called simple mastectomy because you are only removing breast. You are not touching any pectoral muscles. Not touching any pectoral muscles. You are only removing the breast. So the results in terms of survival and recurrence in the breast were similar. So the other thing that we learned from B04 was that in patients with breast cancer, at least clinically no negative breast cancer, extent of operation can be just sufficient the sufficient you know or um, appropriate breast operation can be only removal of the breast and not removing the pectoral muscles not removing the pectoral so this was a challenge first challenge to mr william stuart halstead halsteadian concept was challenged here and you know why dr fisher started all this he did some animal experiment and he found that right from very beginning early stage of tumor progression before it had spread to nodes, before it spread to nodes, he found that it goes to the systemic spread. So he called it systemic. So breast cancer uh, was considered a systemic disease by Dr. Bernard Fisher. And therefore, he said you should give adjuvant or new adjuvant therapy, chemotherapy, and other targeted therapy because breast cancer is systemic disease to begin, to begin, okay, right from the beginning. So two things we learned from no, in node negative women. Total mastectomy alone is sufficient, not halstead mastectomy, and nodes can be treated appropriately by, by radiotherapy and need not do axillary dissection. So, so then we come to B06. B06 trial compared three things. So they became very, you know, sort of uh, optimistic that uh, these trials can make the surgery less mutilating, less disfiguring. So can we shrink the extent of our cut on the memory gland further? So the answer came in the form of B06 trial, where women were randomized either to have their only breast lump removed, or lumpectomy with X-ray dissection, or lumpectomy followed by radiotherapy to the breast, or MRM. This time, the operation was no longer halstead radical mastectomy. It was a modified radical mastectomy. In modified radical mastectomy, what are the structures removed? Just to recap, anybody? What are the structures sir, we are removing? Sir, the nipple areola or the hmm? two centimeter margin around the... Uh, no, it's the skin, skin over the first thing. Skin. No, no, first thing you say is tumor, breast tumor. You must remove breast tumor, right? So first thing you say breast tumor with a skin over it skin and over two it. centimeter of skin margin all around it, nipple areola, then pectoral fascia, axillary tail of spence, level one, two, and three nodes, sparing the following nerves: medial lateral pectoral nerve, thoracodorsal nerve, cerebral. and if possible, iliacal. Okay, so tumor you must say start with the tumor. Tumor with entire breath. So um, we learned that either MRM or lumpectomy or lumpectomy plus RT radiotherapy. So who were the patients? Patients with four centimeter or less. Four centimeter. So somebody you know ask why do we give chemotherapy to tumors more than four centimeter? Why it is this cut off? So one answer is this because NSAVP 06 trial had chosen. 4 centimeter as a cutoff, and we now know that in 4 or less, lumpectomy with radiotherapy is as good an operation as MRM. So, this 4 comes from there. Okay, so we have chosen 4 cutoff, and more than 4, we try to see the B06 did not answer what will happen if their tumor is 5 centimeter. Okay, that's why in 5 centimeter tumor, more than 4. We give chemotherapy, bring it to four or less than four, and then do lumpectomy and RT radiotherapy. Okay, so the 
4 comes from here in SBB06. Because they had observed, Dr. Fisher and others had observed that uh, in average size memory gland, tumor less than 4 cm can be removed with reasonably decent cosmetic outcome uh, by approximating the breast tissue, parenchyma. In earlier times, you know, they were not approximating the tissue. They were leaving the uh, cavity as such and it used to fill with the fluid seroma and seroma was nicely seen on x-ray and even ultrasound. So, radiotherapists were actually giving radiotherapy boost based on the appearance of seroma. So, seroma was a guide to radiotherapists to offer boost to the tumor bed area. But then once oncoplasty started, we started closing that cavity and now, uh, and now we have to put clips, like a clips, titanium clips to identify the tumor bed for giving boost to radiotherapy. So initially it was seroma guided radiotherapy, now it is titanium clip guided radiotherapy. Okay, so 4 centimeter cutoff was in B06, less than 4 centimeter lumpectomy, lumpectomy with RT or MRM, three combinations. Okay. So, less than 4 cm is called operable breast cancer in majority of the studies, operable breast cancer. So, the question was, question was, in women with stage 1 or 2 invasive breast cancer, so far we are studying invasive breast cancer, NSMD B06, B04, all invasive cancer, okay. Who had either lumpectomy or lumpectomy and RT on mastectomy, what happens to their survival? So it was a randomized, multi-center, randomized trial. Most of these NSABP trials are multi-centered because uh, the idea is to get huge sample size so that we can achieve appropriate statistical power and the results are valid and reliable. Okay, when the sample size is large, the uh, statistical tests are more valid and uh, the randomization also works better if uh, number of patients randomized is large okay so that's why we have the concept of large simple randomized trials and in order to make it large we have to in involve many surgeons many centers that's why it is called multi-central trial total number of patients uh, included in the study 2163 okay so had 713 total mastectomy, 719 lumpectomy alone, and 73. So they were trying to answer the question is removal of the lump up to 4 centimeters sufficient in treating breast cancer? So that was that's why they put this question. This research question was is removal of the breast lump alone is sufficient in treating patient with invasive breast cancer, but which is still early or we have to give radiotherapy. So, uh, these were the center, 34 member sites in United States and also Canada. Uh, so, it's a North American trial, United States as well as Canada, and Canada. So, enrollment began in July of 1971. So, almost same time as B06, B04. B04 also started in uh, 1971 and closed 74. So same time as B04. So B04 and B06 were started at the same time. Okay. 71 and end in 74. Same time period. Same time period. 71 to 74. B04 and B06. Same trial. Follow up has been. Uh, offered for more than now it's more than 20 years now uh, this is some older study but the last publication was 20 years ago and they analyzed the results of this randomized trial on the concept on the principle of intention to treat analysis intention to treat analysis means that uh, you analyze a patient's result in the group in which he or she is recruited so if uh, you recruit a patient in 
से कीमोथेरेपी विद से हाइपरबारिक ऑक्सीजन थेरेपी देन यू हैव रेंडमाइज हर इन हाइपरबारिक ऑक्सीजन विद कीमो सो यू मस्ट गिव दैट इफ फॉर सम रीजन दैट दे ऑक्सीजन इज नॉट अवेलेबल और पेशेंट रिफ्यूज टू गो इन दिन चैम्बर स्टिल यू हैव टू एनालाइज हर आउटकम इन दिस ग्रुप even if she did not receive any oxygen okay so that's the concept of intention treat analysis the idea is that when you started the study when you began the study as they did in 71 when you began the study you had the intention you had the intention to treat uh, mrs gupta or mrs williams or mrs agrawal by this treatment so no matter what she gets suppose we randomize a patient into one treatment say chemotherapy radiotherapy oxygen anything and she comes out of the hospital she has signed the consent so she is randomized she goes out of the hospital gate and she is hit by a bus and dies or has head injury and then she bleeds to death even then you will analyze her data in the same group in which she was analyzed she was recruited okay so that's the concept of intention to treat analysis and primary outcome was survival so inclusion criteria stage 1 or 2 invasive breast cancer tumor of less than 4 cm in largest diameter and advanced cancers t3 t4 were not included inflammatory cancer was why inflammatory cancer was not included can somebody answer try to answer why this is exclusion criteria because wide local excision is contraindicated in thermic breast cancer why 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 because because you have it's a tumor with marred marred aggressive biological behavior and angiogenesis and and diffuse odor ranch there are tumor emboli in the subdermal and deep lymphatic plexus tumor emboli in the lymphatic plexus and the dermis and in the parenchyma removal of only part of the breast as lumpectomy will leave these tumor emboli in rest of the skin and it is bound to recur so in inflammatory cancer only treatment is chemotherapy first then full mastectomy no role of sentinel node no role of breast conservation and no role of breast reconstruction three three things are no 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 breast conservation no sentinel node and no breast reconstruction okay and uh, so uh, okay so for the raj involving more than one third why what does this line meaning for the raj involving more than one third means what why this was excluded <laughs> yeah ah, very good so this is a sign of inflammatory cancer okay odoranj involving more than one third of the skin of the breast is a feature of inflammatory cancer skin ulceration so some people say you have ulceration you will, i'll give chemotherapy and later on or i have diffused odoranj i will give chemotherapy and then later on i will try to do breast conservation well it, uh, breast conservation as we know uh, fr- Uh, from the results of b06 did not include this group okay so if you are doing this reducing in patient who have ulceration of odoran giving chemo and the ulcer heals odoran disappears and then you say oh, okay ma'am we can try preserving your breast you are taking a risk this is not proven by the data right this is not proven by the data so uh, therefore some people say skin involvement is a contraindication to breast conservation whether uh, even if uh, this thing heals ulcers we, we have seen ulcers healing with chemotherapy odorans disappearing with chemotherapy nodes disappearing complete breast lump disappearing even then the classical literature does not suggest offering breast conservation in this group of women okay satellite nodule again for satellite nodule is a feature of skin involvement classically breast conservation should be offered even after chemotherapy only to t3 up to t3 disease this is all t4 t4b 
T4B, T4B, ulcer, podorange, and satellite nodule. So, what does parasternal nodes mean? Internal memory chain of nodes. Parasternal internal memory chain. So, presence of internal memory chain of node uh, makes what? What N3 according to HACC? Can somebody tell? N2 or N3 or if, both? If only internal memory nodes are present in absence of axillary nodes, then we huh. say it is N2B. If both N3. axillary nodes and internal memory nodes are positive, then we call it N3B. N3, 3. B. Okay. And N3C is supraclavicular. C is a cervical. Yeah. And yes. 3C is cervical, isn't it? 3C is uh, supraclavicular. 3A C. is intraclavicular. And 3B uh -huh. is internal memory in absence of axillary. Okay. I mean, in absence of axillary. Yes. Hmm. So C, C for cervical, C for C. Okay. Yes, I remember. Yeah. C for cervical. So node has gone to cer cervical. Okay. Fixed nodes. N2 disease was also not excluded, uh, not included. Uh, and size of the node, over 2 centimeter size node were also excluded. So these were the limits and significant comorbidities like heart lung disease, pregnant ladies, breastfeeding ladies, they were all excluded. So tomorrow you see a patient who was pregnant or who has been breastfeeding and developed breast cancer during that period and you offer neoadjuvant chemotherapy and later on try to preserve the breast again your uh, treatment is not very much evidence based because this is not supported by b06 trial so uh, this slide shows the baseline characteristics in this group of women in the clinically node negative women total mastectomy age was 56 menopausal status all uh, post menopause 69% were post menopausal by and large, uh, you know, breast cancer is a disease of the elderly and uh, nearly 70% you can say are postmenopausal. And that's why, you know, in uh, your American or European data, you will read that uh, uh, ER positivity is about 70% in their group, 70 70%. Why? Because their patients are mostly elderly. In elderly age group, it's mostly ER positive disease. So their ER positivity is much higher. 60 to 70 percent in uh, our country data from tata and also from aims shows only to 40 to 50 percent are er positive because we have more of younger patient below 50 aggressive disease aggressive biology and er pr hr or triple negative or er negative. okay mm. in clinically node negative 30 percent were treated by uh, Total mastectomy 33, one third, one third, one third. Okay, so equally do. So, this means what? This means that randomization worked. So, we present this data in, in when if you have done a randomized trial, you're writing a thesis or writing a paper from your thesis of RCT, you should give the data in table one. Table one title is baseline characteristics. Baseline characteristics baseline characteristics table one and these are the data you should and the idea of giving baseline characteristics is to show to the reader to the reader or the audience in a conference that randomization worked so if one third one third one third equally they were treated by the treatment so that means randomization worked they were equally distributed in the three groups in the clinically positive women, uh, half had lumpectomy and regional radiation and half had total mastectomy alone. Okay. In the node positive women, they did not have this group of lumpectomy alone. If nodes are positive, you have to do, you have to do something more than lumpectomy. See, it makes sense. Otherwise, it is unethical to do only lumpectomy. So, they did lumpectomy and regional uh, radiation or total mastectomy alone actually lymph nodes are removed regardless of treatment arm so in all the three they remove the in those days sentinel node concept was not existing so they remove the axillary nodes in all them okay so and how was the negative margin defined 
no tumor on the inked margin no tumor on the inked margin so negative margin and two level axillary roots were removed in all the cases and positive margin means tumor was reaching the inked margin so this was the definition of positive margin tumor reaching the inked margin okay maybe uh, one day we will show some photographs of the specimens to illustrate and some histology slides maybe to explain all these what does this uh, tumor in the ing margin mean so we'll request our pathologist to give you some pictures uh, to explain all this okay and uh, nodes were removed on block on what does the meaning of on block removal and any pathology we talk of tumor with on block with on block node I mean, continuity Sorry. with the tumor. Continuity with the tumor. Okay. okay. So, the theory so, was that uh, uh, there is a gentleman called William Sampson Handley. William Sampson Handley, he was uh, uh, awarded with the um, John Hunter's lecture in Royal College of Surgeons. In Royal College of Surgeons in England, they award very distinguished surgeons as hunterian lecture so um, hunterian lecture so this gentleman was uh, uh, awarded hunterian lecture uh, dr william samson handley um, uh, i have a book written by him william samson handley um, i think one of you have it so it was given to be my my teacher professor hughes uh, so this gentleman performed um, dissection of the autopsy you know the autopsy dissection of the uh, primary tumor in melanoma he did this autopsy in melanoma patients who had died of metastasis and so he dissected the primary and then the skin um, and subcutaneous tissue going up to the nodes so he found that uh, this is finding on one autopsy one autopsy okay he found that the tumor creeping like a reptile through the lymphatics we don't know whether it was lymphatic he just saw a creeping block of black melanoma tissue from the primary skin primary skin tumor reaching the nodes like a continuum like a continuum okay so in those days we did not have special stains for lymphatics now we have special stains we can distinguish under the microscope whether a hollow structure is a blood vessel or a lymphatic so what is the difference between blood vessel and lymphatic on microscopy lymphatics uh, will have uh, only one layer and uh, they, they, have, have, they have white they have they have white they have they have well defined muscle layer so muscle layer is absent except in large lymphatics like thoracic duct they may have few smooth muscles but otherwise by and large muscles are absent that's why they don't have pulsatile action contractile and relaxation so they do not respond to the um, alpha and beta receptor drug uh, modulators you know if you give beta blockers uh, or the muscles relax you know they if you give dopamine the vasodilatation if you give noradrenaline vessels constrict so that is a property of only arterioles and these sphincters venules to some extent but lymphatics none because lymphatics lack the well defined muscle layer in the media anything else the lymphatic capillaries do not it's have any hours. basement membrane just a layer of endothelial cells which are not connected to each other they are lying there just by some filaments holding them in position and there is no basement membrane in lymphatics remember in the lymphatic capillaries there are no base and membrane only endothelial cells loosely hanging to each other or loosely you know bridged to each other by some filaments in capillary blood vessel capillaries we have well defined base and membrane consisting of type 4 collagen and laminin laminin and type 4 collagen forms the base and membrane of the blood vessel capillaries lymphatic capillaries lack a basement membrane that's why tumor cells find it easier after they digesting the metalloproteinases the tissue cement 
with MMP, they enter the lymphatic first because it's easier to enter. There's no basal membrane to break. So it's like, you know, uh, when the, imagine some thieves are trying to um, steal your fo food or any, any item in your house. So if there are two houses, the house where there is no wall, outer wall, the thieves can enter quickly, quickly isn't it? Compared to a house where there is a well-defined boundary wall. Okay, so because blood vessels, blood vessels, uh, the capillaries do not have a basin membrane, so tumor cells find it easier to enter into lymphatic capillaries. So, um, so the patients were then given 50 grays of radiation, right, in the breast. No axillary radiation because axilla was dissected in all these patients. So what was the outcome? They assessed overall survival. Overall survival was the primary outcome. Lumpectomy alone versus total mastectomy. So the hazard of death, hazard rate. One means uh, the hazard of dying due to lumpectomy and hazard of dying due to total mastectomy is same. So if, there's, if this is 10%, this is 10%. 10 upon 10 is 1. 50, this in lumpectomy, 50 in total. 50 upon 50 is 1. So hazard rate of 1, hazard ratio, it's a hazard ratio of 1 means hazard of death in lumpectomy is equal to hazard of death in the total mastectomy. When it is equal, then only you will get a ratio of 1. Okay? If you have 50% death, 50 upon 50, 1. 70 upon 71. So both have to be equal. Then only you will get a ratio of 1. So hazard ratio of 1 means that the overall survival in lumpectomy alone is equal to total mastectomy alone. Okay? So that means you do not cause more deaths by doing only lumpectomy. Recurrence may increase, but survival is not altered. So this is the first proof. B06 was the first trial to prove that survival is not altered by extent of breast surgery. Extent of tumor removal was not altered by surgery. By, uh, with, uh, it, uh, survival was not altered by lumpectomy. Okay. And then, um, what about the overall survival? Lumpectomy radiation, same. Okay. At 20 years, total mastectomy versus lumpectomy alone versus lumpectomy radiation, same. All the so for all survival lumpectomy with positive margin, with lumpectomy with negative margin, 0.9. Slightly worse, but uh, not much worse. So even if you have some cells at the microscopy, if you have given radiotherapy, you probably control the disease. So survival is not altered by extent of surgery. This was the lesson we learned. And lumpectomy with RT can effectively treat breast cancer. This is the other lesson. So breast conservation. So I was telling about the William Sampson Handley's doing um, autopsy of one patient who had died of metastatic melanoma. So he found that tumor was creeping like a, a black streak going from primary tumor to the node. So he said this is in trans. This is lymphatic permeation. So he gave the word tumor cells permeate like a like a reptile. They permeate from the primary and creep inside the lumen of the lymphatic to reach the nodal basin. So if this is the true, if the tumor is spreads by lymphatic permeation, then the common sense is that you remove the primary tumor, remove the nodes and remove all the tissue intervening in between, isn't it? So this gave the concept of removal of the primary tumor, removal of the nodal basin and the tissue in between. This is called incontinuity block dissection. Whether it's, it started in melanoma, but the same concept was then uh, borrowed in head and neck cancer and in breast cancer. So in breast cancer, we are removing the breast, removing the axilla and the, all the tissue in between. Why in between? Because tumor cells are going along the lymphatics so I must remove all the lymph intervening lymphatics which may be containing the tumor cells. 
so this is the concept of lymphatic permeation but this was based on very little uh, evidence just one case of autopsy finding of a patient who had died of metastatic melanoma okay later on um, lot of uh, scientists performed animal work and they found that human and in humans they found that solid tumors do not spread by permeation they spread by embolization embolization means what tumor forms a tumor embolus it floats like pulmonary embolus you know where dvt thrombus goes from the leg suddenly flows from the a uh, common ileac vessel into vein into inferior vena cava and then the right atrium and then goes to the pulmonary trunk so tumor embolus like pulmonary venous thrombus embolus floats in the lymph and then reaches the node so that gave the theory of lymph node is spread by embolization and the current uh, uh, scientific uh, Uh, view point is that most solid tumors spread by embolization not by permeation not by permeation so when the permeation theory was being practiced they removed the tongue they removed the all the nodes radical kryls neck dissection and they removed all the intervening tissue because they said oh tumor is in the intervening lymphatics so you must do in continuity block dissection so tongue then the base the floor of the mouth and then the mandible and then it was called commando dissection commando operation so because the surgeons thought at that time that tumor is spreading by in continuity lymphatic permeation and when later on this theory was refuted and people said no no human solid tumors is spread mostly by embolization so you remove the primary remove the tongue or mandible or cheek and remove the neck nodes do not need to remove tissue in between because tumor is not spreading by permeation it is spreading by embolization understand so that's why we do say lumpectomy of the say lower inner quadrant and then axillary dissection and then leave the breast in between we are not removing the continuity connections right we are not removing the lymphatics connecting the primary tumor to the axilla because we do not believe in the theory of lymphatic permeation we believe in theory of lymphatic embolization okay tumor cells embolize and they go to nodes anyway so that was the uh, concept of tumor spreading by embolization so overall survival please note that is not much difference you know 47% plus 46 46 Almost equal. No statistically significant difference. P value of 0.57 means what? Can somebody elucidate? 0.57 P value. So not statistically significant. No, no. What do you mean by this? What is the meaning? Doctor Desiman, can you explain P value 0.57? How do you explain this? Tomorrow. Fifty. Fifty-seven times out of hundred times. the value that will be observed as uh, i mean that will come as uh, the result will be mm. by chance very good very good so 0.57 means 57 out of what 100 no yes, 57 out of 100 that huh. i mean 57 out of 100 occ occurrences occurrences uh, if you if you perform this experiment 100 times in 57 out of 100 this value that you obtained what value did you obtain 46% survival 47% survival will be by chance so if yes. something is happening 50% of the time by chance you don't believe it okay you yes. say that no 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 it is chance uh, it is just by chance so there is no actual difference between these two if we say that uh, it is 1 out of 100 by chance then that me what if i say 1 out of 100 by chance and 99 out of 100 that is it is due to this surgery so you tend to believe the data yes okay. so lesser is the probability greater is your faith in the data faith in the data and you trust that these findings are real they are not due to chance alone and in general 
by statisticians and doctors have agreed that anything chance less than 5 out of 100 we can uh, consider as a true phenomenon biological phenomena and if the chance pl plays a role more than 5 out of 100 more than 5 percent then 5 percent means 5 out of 100 right we okay. tend to ignore it that's the meaning of signal and they also evaluated some secondary outcomes like uh, uh, death due to breast cancer and uh, again Death due to breast cancer hazard was 0.82. So they, this is significant. Lumpectomy and radiation therapy versus lumpectomy alone. Lumpectomy and radiation therapy versus lumpectomy alone. So you will put, suppose this is death in uh, say 50% here. Lumpectomy plus RT. So 50 divided by death in lumpectomy alone. Suppose this is this is 50, this is 60. Okay. This is 50 upon 60. So you will get around 0.8, right? Less than that. So anything less than one means that phenomenon or that treatment is, is more effective, more effective, right? So there are less deaths in the lumpectomy and RT compared to lumpectomy alone. So RT saves some lives. So the message is RT not only reduces recurrence, but it also saves some lives save some lives okay so the recurrence this is important the examiner may ask you in the viva you know cumulative incidence or recurrence in the breast in the same breast in lumpectomy alone 39 percent chance at 20 years lumpectomy plus rt reduced to 14 percent and in mastectomy mrm 10 percent 10 percent 8 to 10 percent so 39% lumpectomy alone, reduced to 14% with RT, and RT also saves some lives. Saves some lives because hazard of death is reduced 0 0.82. 0 0.82 means 20% deaths are less. 0 0.8 means what? Right, 0 0.8. 8 means 8 upon 10, right? So if this is 82, in the bottom will be 100, right? 82 upon 100, 0 0.82 means. So if the death is 82 in lumpectomy plus RT, it will be 100 in the lumpectomy. So that means 22 or 18 percent deaths are prevented by giving radiation. So deaths are prevented by radiation and recurrences are prevented by radiation. So these two uh, story uh, morals we learned by B06. So this is the moral of the story. Radiation with lumpectomy reduces recurrence and reduces death. Okay, and uh, these are other events. Disease-free survival was almost similar in all the three groups. So no difference, virtually no difference in overall survival or disease-free survival in the three treatment groups, lumpectomy alone, lumpectomy plus RT and MRM. So this is the large body of evidence supporting the performance of BCT, breast conservation therapy. See, BCT or BCS, what is the difference between BCS? When we say BCS, what do we mean? It's, it means only breast conservation it means surgery. Only breast conservation surgery. So when you give options to a lady with early breast cancer in a multidisciplinary dream, you must explain, Madam, if you want to preserve your breast, we will do breast conservation, but we must, we must uh, give radiotherapy to you. It is mandatory. Otherwise, the recurrence is very high, 39%. And due to breast cancer is more, 20% more. Okay? So we must give breast conservation therapy. Therapy means, BCT means BCS plus RT. BCS plus RT is called BCT. Okay? So you should offer BCT as breast conservation, not BCS alone. Only 90-year-old lady bedridden with polio or a stroke, she has come from a nursing home all the time with bed sores. You can just do palliative lumpectomy and give tamoxifen. That's as a difference. But by and large, if lady can um, lie on a radiation machine, 
for 10 15 minutes you must offer radiotherapy okay so that was in the so cumulative incidence of recurrence 14% 14% with lumpectomy with rt compared to 39% with lumpectomy alone the highly significant difference okay now uh, i think i'll go to another trial where some surgical trial has been done so that surgical trial which has again changed the uh, standard of uh, care for early breast cancer is called nsapb b32 trial so perhaps the largest trial which has validated the concept of sentinel node biopsy technique so b32 trial randomized 5611 women with clinically node negative women today we say clinically and sonographically negative axilla but in those days axillary ultrasound was not the standard so they just took women where the axillary nodes were not palpable right but if you somebody asks what is the indication of sentinel node i have seen early breast cancer you should say women with t1 t2 breast cancer with no skin involvement and clinically and sonographically negative axilla and 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 what no inflammatory breast cancer and not pregnant and non lactating you should also say that because all the trials all the sentinel node trials have excluded women who were pregnant and lactating you could not give radioisotope to pregnant ladies and you could not also give radioisotope to the lactating ladies because the isotope will come probably to mother's milk so pregnant and lactating women were excluded inflammatory cancer was excluded t4b was excluded okay so this is the study design again multi center um, randomized either to have sentinel node followed by aland or sentinel node followed by evaluating the histology and if nodes are positive then only we will do aland okay so exactly same see see the beauty of large randomized trials you get similar exact similar 2807 patient here 2804 only three patient difference you know so large randomized trials have this power they distribute all the factors equally, including the number of patients equally in the two groups. So, um, again, it was distributed along uh, over 80 uh, cancer centers within United States and Canada. And again, uh, enrollment began in 1999 and ended in 2004. So, eight-year follow-up was presented in a paper in Lancet in 2010 and more uh, analysis has been presented later on in 30. Again, intention treaty analysis, primary outcome was overall survival. All ladies, 18. Why 18 is the cutoff in most trials? In your thesis, you know, we also say people aged 18 and above will be included. Why? Why do we say that? Because 18 is the legal age. In most countries, above 18 person is considered adult. And person is considered able to sign her own consent. Okay, unless patient has some mental problem, you know, mentation or cognitive disorder. But 18 and above is a legal age in most countries, and person is considered adult and able to give consent for her treatment. So 18 is and above. Invasive breast cancer, and again, so in situ. You don't do sentinel load in inside two. Only indication for sentinel load inside two is mastectomy. When you are doing mastectomy, okay. Otherwise, no role. And should be clinically and sonographically negative axilla exclusion. Um, they did not say, but uh, pregnant and lactating women were excluded. So again, baseline characteristics: age above 40 in 75 percent. So majority of the you know ladies in US are above age 50, 75% of them, you know. 
so they are mostly er positive they most er positive means good prognosis good prognosis dr ismail jatoi is a very eminent uh, teacher in breast uh, cancer uh, surgery um, and he says that uh, uh, we have two different types of breast cancer one is early onset other is late onset early onset below 50 aggressive biology more er negative more node positive more death more triple negative disease, maybe more familial also, genetic also, and above 50 postmenopausal, ER positive, node negative, good biology, good survival. So he says probably these two groups are derived from different stem cells. He has some data to suggest that these two tumors are derived from different stem cells their origin is different okay so uh, so they they stratified tumors into size age below 50 above 50 and then tumor size 2 to 4 2 to 4 and more than 4 okay So intervention they are evaluating whether you do sentinel node or they included lumpectomy and mastectomy both both are randomized to either sentinel node followed by ALND or sentinel node followed by ALND only if only if one or more sentinel node was found histologically positive to contain tumor metastasis in the node okay either by frozen section if some centers do not have frozen so there they decided on distal uh, de uh, delayed pathology final hne histology or if they had frozen then they did uh, intraoperatively okay so all patients had sentinel node biopsy and if sentinel node biopsy was done by a combination of two tracers one tracer is blue dye lymphazurin patent blue and other is isotope this was done by Dr. David Craig. Dr. David Craig was the principal investigator in B0, uh, B32 trial. Dr. David Craig is the originator of isotope guided sentinel node biopsy of the breast. First man to, to conduct or to start isotope guided sentinel node biopsy. Dr. David Craig, C R A G. You should remember that. And first man to start blue dye guided sentinel node in breast. Giuliano, Armando Giuliano, Armando Giuliano, right? Armando Giuliano, first blue dye guided sentinel node, and Dr. David Craig, first man to perform isotope guided. And first man to do sentinel load in any tumor? Cabana is in. They say Cabana for penile cancer, but in a, that was just in some dissection by lympho, uh, lymphangiography, actually. He injected some radio lipoidol, which is used for lymphatic mapping, radioactive, not radioactive, radi, what is the term? Opaque, radio opaque, radio opaque, radio opaque dye with x ray, you uh, identify ordinary x rays, but uh, isotope based dye uh, guided sentinel node was first started by Dr. D. L. Morton, M O R T O N, Morton, D. L. Morton. Uh, again, all the D.L. Morton, David Craig, Armando Giuliano, all are from John Wayne Institute, Santa Monica, California. John Wayne Institute. Okay. Very famous center. Dr. Uh, Sinu from Ames uh, visited Armando Giuliano's uh, center and he learned it, this technique from him in 1999 and he came back to India and taught most of us um, uh, how to perform sentinel node biopsy. So, you should know all these names. So, uh, dual tracer is regarded as the standard because if some lymphatics are shown by the blue dye, others are shown by the isotope. And if you combine the two, then yield will be more, identification of the nodes will be more, and chances of missing a cancer will be less. So that is false negative is less. Primary outcome was survival here, and they found that it was 92% versus 
no difference okay no difference hazard rate 1.2 1.2 means what when if, if you remove the decimal 120 upon 100 so 120 upon 100 so 20 percent more chance of death in which group in sentinel node alone hello or in other group hello alone group only sir. no in the other i think other group we just okay, check yeah. because you know um, what is happening if you remove all the nodes if you remove all the nodes then probably you are reducing the body's immune response and uh, i think it is the other group uh, so 120 is the in the even in the yeah. acosog zeta 11 trial uh, it was like yeah. difference was more for the lnd group than uh, slnb in the early uh, five years uh, report survival survival no survival axillary recurrence is more axillary recurrence is more when you do only sentinel Mm -hmm. LND has less axillary recurrence, 0.9 percent versus 0.5 percent, mm -hmm. 0.9 versus 0.5, and in uh, 12 years follow up, it is 1.5 versus 0.5 became 1.5 and 0.9 remain 0.9. So, so death without recurrence, death without disease recurrence. HR 1.3, that means exactly similar, no difference or 3% difference, you can say. But if the confidence interval crosses their value of null value of 1, it is 0.7 means less than 1, 1 1.5 more than 1. So if 95% crosses the null value of 1, that means it is not statistically significant, NS. Second recurrence, second cancers in the long term follow up, you know, new primary, contralateral breast cancer, they were all uh, not different. Distant recurrence. Alive, alive and event free 84 versus 83 again no difference so nsbp b32 trial has shown that by doing sentinel node alone in one group and leaving to that level if nodes are negative so sentinel node negative and stop versus do the dissection if node is positive it makes sense isn't it so it has the same survival as you do with ALND. So ALND is not needed to improve the survival. And they noted some allergic reaction with the blue dye, 0 0.8. No, very rare. Because they use lymphazurin. Methylene blue has less uh, um, uh, blue dye guided reaction. So I think I'll stop here and then um, take questions. These are the trials where uh, so this is the reference from the B32 trial by Dr. David Craig. Okay, Dr. David Craig et al. Published first in Lancet in September 2010 and page 927. Sir, B32? B32? Huh? Yes? What's the question, Dr. Dethiman? Dr. Dr. Dethiman, what's the question? Non trial. Ah, it is a non-inferiority trial. It is a non-inferiority trial. Yeah. It's a non-inferiority so trial. Was it a non-inferiority B32. So was it a non-inferiority trial? Or? Yeah, no, both are non-inferiority. Amaros is also non-inferiority. All three. Zilias, Ziliano, Amaros, B32. All are non-inferiority trials. It's 1930. So... In, in situ cancers, we have one trial called B17. They did lumpectomy in one group and lumpectomy plus RT in other group for localized DCIS. Okay. And they found that recurrence was reduced to half. So, and B17 for in situ lumpectomy or lumpectomy plus RT. Then they added B24, again trial of DCIS. So, they had learned from B17 that lumpectomy plus RT is good. It reduces the recurrence. So learning from B17, they went to the B24 trial where they took women with localized DCIS and randomized tamoxifen plus BCS plus RT in one group and 
PCS plus RT is equal to PCT versus placebo. So tamoxifen was added and they found that in ER positive tumors, there was a re reduction in recurrence compared to the other group. Okay. So again, B24 taught us that you should treat DCIS by lumpectomy, RT, and then tamoxifen if it is ER positive. So initially they gave tamoxifen to all because in those days they did not know whether ER status has the relationship with tamoxifen. Later on they reanalyzed the data and they found that the benefit of reducing recurrence and contralateral cancer was only present in women who had ER positive tumors. ER negative tumor had no benefit. So they stopped giving tamoxifen to ER negative tumors. Okay. We also used to give tamoxifen to all ladies. But then we stopped and gave only to ER positive tumors. Okay, so I think I think I'll stop here and take other trials are there, but they are mostly evaluating some chemotherapy, new adjuvant chemotherapy, NSAB B18. B18 was AC operative breast operable breast cancer up to four centimeter surgery first, followed by chemotherapy, other group. Chemo first, AC4 cycle, followed by surgery. So either surgery first or chemo first, B18. B18 showed that if you give chemo first with AC, 4 cycle of AC, adramycin cyclophosphamide, which was the standard in America at those days, um, they have found 13% pathological complete remorsion response, PCR. 13% PCR was achieved in women who received AC4 cycle, then surgery. And in the tumor specimen, they saw that in 13 out of 100, tumor cells had gone, vanished. So that is pathological complete response assessed by Miller, Miller, Miller Abbott. Miller pain grade. Miller, Miller pain grade. grade. Miller pain grade. So Miller pain grade. They assess uh, what are the Miller criteria for Miller pain grade? Okay, so Miller pen 5 is complete response and then Miller pen 4 is when uh, there Five is uh, no tumor in the breast as well as in the axilla? Yes, sir. I uh, mean, they yeah. define complete no DCIS, no DCI, nothing, no invasive, no in situ. Hmm. Yeah, yeah, DCIS then, is not concerned, I mean, okay. not considered in it. DCIS might be present. And then, then uh, grade 4 is when uh, there is less than 90% response, hmm. grade 3 is 90 to 50. Mm. Then grade 2 is 50 to 10 and mm. uh, grade 1 is just less than 10% response. So there is a uh, objective criteria of uh, yes, evaluating the response of the tumor to chemotherapy. Yes. It's called I mean, it's not like uh, It is not like res resist because uh, they don't have a pre-operative reference as mm. to what was the pre i mean initial pathological size of the tumor and all it just compares amount of tissue uh, showing cancer versus amount of tissue showing fibrosis fibrosis okay thank you so any question now so then uh, learning from b18 they did another trial um, that there were some reports you know showing that taxane addition of taxane doxycycl improves the survive, uh, survival and recur reduces recurrence. So they added taxane to new adjuvants uh, chemotherapy. It was called B27 trial. So in B27, uh, it was a three-arm trial, new adjuvant chemotherapy, AC4 cycle, then dozitaxel, four cycle, 100 milligram, 100 milligram per meter square, four cycle, then surgery. So AC, four cycle, followed by dozitaxel, four cycle, and then surgery. One arm. Second arm, AC4 cycle, then surgery, and then dozitaxel. Third arm, only surgery and uh, no, no tamoxifen, uh, no uh, uh, taxane. Okay, so they found that uh, addition of uh, dozitaxel doubled the pathological complete response from 13% in the AC4 cycle. So AC4 cycle, then operation. So you have the specimen, you can assess by Miller pain. What is the PCR? PCR was 13% with ACR, AC4 cycle. When you gave AC4 cycle followed by dozitaxel, you got the PCR as 13 into 2, 
26%, exactly double. Okay, from 13%, it became 26% in AC followed by taxane, dozitaxel 4%. So, this was NSABP 27 trial, and uh, uh, so that's why uh, we are now uh, using AC uh, or some uh, anthracycline based plus taxane based combination is being used like dozitaxel epidubicin DE. You know, our doctors often use DE, dozitaxel epidubicin. SS after two cycles, if regression is more than 30%, and largest diameter on racist criteria, continue, complete six cycles, then surgery. Otherwise, operate and then surgery. And then new, further adjuvant therapy. So we learned from B20, B18 that new adjuvant improves the PCR 18%. Um, and then addition of taxane doubles that PCR from 13 to 26%. So these days, Taxane is, are added to anthracycline. Long term follow up of patients who received anthracycline, either new adjuvant or adjuvant, has shown that although cancer, uh, they are cured from cancer, but they are now developing dilated cardiac myopathy. Because anthracyclines, adriamycin and epirubicin, cause damage of the microtubules of the myocardium cells. Microtubules, they cause damage of the microtubules, and the long term result is that they get dilated cardiomyopathy for which there is no treatment, only treatment is heart transplant. So, you are cured of cancer, but they develop, uh, develop a dilated cardiomyopathy and need a heart transplant. So, what is the fun? So, more and more oncologists are now going away from anthracycline based chemotherapy. They are using non anthracycline based drugs. And in order to reduce the long term effect, long term bad effect, cardiotoxic effect of anthracycline. Questions, please. So, more and more NSABB trials are ongoing. You know, there's a trial where they took DCIS with HER3 expression gave trastuzumab in one group, another group did not receive trastuzumab, just follow up, and we are waiting for the results. Results are awaited. That was B38 or 39? 43, 43, sir, 43. 43, 43. 43. So the more modern trials, so the more modern trials on uh, um, more targeted therapies, new adjuvant, trastuzumab, pertuzumab, and you know, double, it's called dual agent, dual blockade of the HER receptor. So we gave two, HER blocker compared to only trastuzumab, but they are more expensive compared to only one trastuzumab. So, so those modern NSAVP trials are mostly addressing the question of addition of targeted therapy and with or without different radiation and other things. So I have focused more on surgical NSABPs, which have changed the pattern of surgery. Thank you very much. Thank you, sir. Thank you, sir. Sir, uh, one day we want you to summarize the statistics for surgeons. <laughs> okay, thank you. I love that subject. <laughs> it's very close to my heart. Uh, I will request uh, my guru, Dr. Sandeep Kumar, also to join because he is a real master of uh, statistics, biostatistics. So we will present together, okay? I'll talk to him. Dr. Sandeep Kumar, the Editor-in-Chief of Indian General of Surgery, very renowned surgeon, teacher, and also a clinical epidemiologist. He taught me the statistics and research. So I'll request him to chip in, and together we will do this study. Okay? okay. Thank, Thank you. you. Thank you. Namaskar. Thanks a lot, sir.